This is Next Gen TV. I'm talking to Lord Errol at the major national conference in London. Lord Errol, the event's been going for five years and now we're at the very heart, right next door to Parliament. Very opportune timing in terms of the demand for broadband in the UK. It's probably extremely opportune because it's about time um, yeah, people started really trying to work out what we're going to do about it because we are dropping behind in the UK and I think there's quite a few people at the top who glaze over when they hear the word digital. But if we don't do something about it, we're going to drop out of the running globally. Yes, I mean, we saw in the FTTH announcement yesterday that we're not even in the top 20. Uh, but I, I take heart from the fact there's a lot of commitment here, isn't there, from people who want to do something about it? Absolutely. And very often there's lots of innovative ideas out there. But the big problem is when you've got a large, basically monopolistic supplier or incumbent in place, it can be very difficult. Because you have to remember that regulations are there, and regulations are for your enemies. And people don't lose, like losing their position. But at the same time, the newest and brightest ideas of solving some of the problems do come from uh, smaller, innovative companies. It's how we get the two to work together in a, in a, a way that's got a proper vision for having a proper broadband uh, enabling throughout the whole of the UK. Yes, I mean, one of the things that Lord Inglewood said in his report is not necessarily just about super fast. It's about horses for courses, making sure we can get as much broadband out there as possible. Yes, I mean, for a lot of things, you don't need super fast, but you have to have sufficient speed to be able to download government information, fill in forms online, etc., because the government's trying to deliver more and more services over the internet. This will reduce infrastructure costs, reduce the number of offices they need around the place. And if you're going to do that, if you're a Welsh hill farm with cattle, you've got to be able to log into the cattle tracing system and log what you're doing, or otherwise you're going to get fined. And so it's got to be reliable and it's got to work. And if we don't get reach right out into the remote areas, the government is still going to have to start manually catering for, say, 10% of the population who they can't reach. So we've got to do this properly. It's got to be ubiquitous, and that means everywhere. Yes, and also there's got to be some education, I think, to go with it. Well, I'm not uh, decrying Welsh hill farmers, but some of them might be a little bit technically challenged. They've got to really understand how easy to, they can use the, com the computers. Um, actually, I think there's a lot of um, preconceived ideas about that. If you've got a purpose for a computer, then you can use it. If you don't have a purpose, I know some people who are very, very bright, but they don't use the computers at all because they don't have to, they don't need, need to. But you'll find grannies who are quite happy Skyping their children, or the grandchildren rather, the other side of the globe, and emailing them, because they had a purpose. Yeah, absolutely. So are you, are you confident, you've been here the, the two days, you, you've heard some of the debate, you've been taking part in it, are you confident that we can catch up? Mm, not at all, no. I think there's huge blockers to it all. I think we spend a lot of time talking, we spend a lot of money on surveys, uh, policy studies and all sorts of things like that, and very little on doing things. Um, yes, you need a certain amount of that and a certain amount of planning, but if you spend too long planning, technology in the world has passed you by by the time you get around to doing something. And we need some action at the end of the day, even if it's not perfect on day one. If you just look at uh, some of the proposals, if you look at uh, some of the proposals for how quickly BT thinks it, um, it can roll things out if it were to do the job, we're talking about hugely long term scales and far too slow. So even the major supplier of the moment, because they've cut back so much on open reach, can't do the job, I don't think, quickly enough to satisfy uh, the demand for being at global access, particularly for medium sized enterprises who are trying to do global business. So it looks like there's a few issues to, uh, to overcome yet. Oh, yes, there are. And as usual, it's the commercial fight behind the scenes. Um, and the fact that the government, I'm afraid, is not very good, I don't think, at distributing money, um, particularly not into the innovative sector. And um, it's always been a problem. I mean, at the end of the day, the Victorians built railways as an act of faith without government money. And here we are, you know, we've got all this money sitting around, we've got a huge bit of tax money, but we're having real problems of getting the, the communications infrastructure of the next millennium in place. Well, let's hope something happens. Uh, and in the meantime, thanks very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you. Paul.